Okay, so we get a lot of you know communicator issues. So one thing I wanted to talk about, and I don't think we've we don't really cover this very much, is the advanced logging capabilities um, and debugging capabilities of the short tail communicator. So anytime you're in communicator, if you were to click into the field that says type a name or number where you can you know the quick dialer and hold the, the shift control F12, it'll it'll launch the support and debugging. And this is, you know, the information that, you know, support teams and, you know, and everybody's going to use as far as logging. This is where I can turn on additional logging. And this is where I can, you know, look at you know, some different statuses and everything. So the first screen you look at here when you open it up or the first tab is your communicator logging. And this is pretty default here. This is all your standard logging that we enable, you know, in the system that allows us to look at, you know, what the, if you're a work group agent when you log in, when you're offered a call, we can look at all the different stats that are offered to that agent. We can look at the instant messaging issues, uh, voicemail, um, the buddy list or the contacts tab. You know, we're, we're able to see all this. And I can simply in the bottom left hand corner hit the open log folder if I wanted to. And this would open up the location where all these logs are stored. And we can start looking through, you know, the different the different logs that we need. Or you can provide a, a particular log over to, you know, to the support team for diagnosing an issue. Next. So the other log settings here is usually these are all turned off. I think I enabled a couple of them for just for, you know, for this training. So these are our Outlook loggings mainly. So we have a lot of, well, I actually have a little bit on Outlook, uh, the Outlook plugins later, but we have a lot of Outlook related issues because there's so many different plugins for Outlook. Sometimes we need to turn on these additional tracing to see what's going on with the conferencing or voicemail plugins inside of inside of Outlook. So this just turns on additional logging that we can that we can look at and you know in and, and assist with figuring out which plugins aren't working or um, if we have a conflict on a on a plugin. The presence indicate in, in integration is is another way you can turn on there. If you have the newer 14.2 version in Outlook um, 2010 or 13, you'll get little you know icons inside your Outlook contacts that tell you the presence. And that's where I would turn on the you know the additional logging to see you know why my presence isn't working inside of Outlook. Okay, next. Server status. This is a, a big one as far as testing and looking for connectivity. If you're you know inside of the the communicator, if communicator is not working properly, this is where you can see you know is it building an active connection? Do you, you know do, are the IP addresses right? It's going to show you the login IP. That's the server IP that you're connecting to. What's the username? Does that user, you know, what kind of role does that user have? And then what versions, uh, the client and server version, which is always important because, you know, like I said, you don't have to have the same version, but it's nice to know, okay, am I running a version that's older than what's on the server? Because if I do, if I'm running into some issues, I have an upgrade path, you know, that I can use in here. And this will also show you different features that are enabled for this, for this user based on user permission. So I can see the agent monitor, the queue monitor, the directory, the history. And some of those are because I'm a, like a, a you know, a work group supervisor or an operator, I can see some like the agent monitor and the queue monitor windows that a traditional user wouldn't see when they're looking at that. And if I were to, you know, if you were to scroll down, you'll see some different options and stuff there. The next one is the CAS subscription. And this is the, the CAS is, is what's controlling all the, com the configuration of the, the communicator client. You know, you can see here, it's got it timestamps. And then it starts listening through the different toolbars. You know, if I have different toolbars pushed, this is showing you what's syncing information off of the server. So are the toolbars that we have pushing for this user, are they are they working correctly? You know, you could just look through the status and it'll it'll give you the statuses of different um, configurations and stuff that are that are being pushed to the use to this user's um, configuration and communicator. All of these this information is stored on the server. So every time communicator launches, it resyncs to make sure it's not missing or there wasn't any changes to their communicator since they had you know they launched it the last time. Okay, next. So personal contact data. This is with the integration with Outlook. So this is showing okay, I'm integrating the my short tail communicator to our Outlook for so we can do contact lookups. So this will tell us you know what our limit is for uploads, and then how many uploads you know in contacts it found. So you can see the the, the updated sources. Outlook it found 299 contacts. Um, you know, in the folder that it uploaded to the server. So those contacts are available inside of my directory and stuff. And this is a good source to look if for some reason we're not importing contacts, you know, into the system. We can look in here and we can see, oh, are, you know, are the different add-ins, are they loaded? Are they, are they, you know, connected? And then are we getting any, you know, 
any kind of information. And then we can open up, a, you know, the, the log and see, okay, it'll actually list out, you know, contacts and stuff that it imports, you know, into, into the log file. So it's nice to see, you know, we can look at that for troubleshooting if we're not importing contacts into the system. Next. This one's probably used the least of all, you know, of all of these is we don't have a ton of customers using the, the, the soft phone feature, you know, and, and the biggest reason is, you know, the, the technology and stuff used in the current version of the soft phone is, is a bit old, uh, as Travis is going to talk about when connect, you know, the, the new soft phone, um, you know, it's been redesigned and updated with, you know, with all the current, you know, SIP and soft phone standards. So we're going to get a lot stabler and, and more reliable soft phone in the, in the, in the connect version of, uh, of short coming up. But this is where I can turn on additional logging by default. None of these are on. So you turn on additional logging and then, you know, we have access to see why is the, you know, is the soft phone having issues connecting to the server, to the switch, you know, so we can determine, are we having routing issues? Are we, you know, uh, what's you know what particular issues are we having on the on the soft phone sometimes it'll show you that we're not initializing with the with the local you know um, connection on the windows server or windows pc because we do rely a lot on the uh, on the windows pc to provide some of you know the the tappy services and stuff that we're looking for um, on the computer so uh, if you notice on the bottom we have the open log i talked about and we also have the send client logs um, if you click that, we're going to cover that a little bit. Is how to how to you know how to grab all these logs and package them together to send them off to you know for additional troubleshooting. A lot of time when we're trying to to get a, a, a defect verified with Shortel, we have to provide them logs so that they can verify the in in the logs that this particular bug 